Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 18 of the course on statistics and probability. You will recall that in the last lecture I discussed with you the concept of permutations and combinations and after that we discussed a number of important and fundamental concepts such as the random experiment, the sample space of a random experiment, the concept of events and different types of events such as the mutually exclusive, the equally likely and the exhaustive events. In today's lecture, I will discuss with you the various ways in which probability can be defined. These include the subjective approach as well as the objective approach and then under the objective approach we have different ways of defining probability. But students, before I begin these formal definitions of probability, I would like to revise with you briefly the concept of mutually exclusive events, exhaustive events and equally likely events. Let us begin with the concept of mutually exclusive events. As you now see on the screen, two events A and B of a single experiment are said to be mutually exclusive or disjoint if and only if they cannot both occur at the same time. In other words, they do not have any point or element in common. For example, when we toss a coin, we get either a head or a tail, but we cannot have both head and tail at the same time. Similarly, when a die is rolled, the events even number and odd number are mutually exclusive as we can get either an even number or an odd number in a one particular throw and we cannot get both of them at the same time. Coming to real world situations, a student will either pass or fail in an exam. Ye to nahi hoga na ki wo bayak waqt pass bhi hua hua hai aur fail bhi hua hua ek, ek particular paper mein. Similarly, a person will either be a teenager or he or she is not a teenager. It is not possible that both these things are happening at the same time. So I think you will agree that it is a fairly simple concept. And if we talk about three or more events at the same time, such events which are originating from the same experiment, they will be said to be mutually exclusive if they are mutually exclusive pairwise. On the contrary, if two events are such that both of them can occur at the same time, then of course we will say that they are not mutually exclusive. For example, if we draw a card from an ordinary deck of 52 playing cards, it can be both a king and a diamond at the same time. Therefore, kings and diamonds are not mutually exclusive events. Jab hum playing cards ki baat karte hain, to aapko malum hi hoga ke ek ordinary deck of cards mein bavan patte hote hain aur char rang hote hain, hukam, chidiya, um, eat or pan. And in English, of course, we say spade, club, diamond and hearts. Har rang ke liye tera patte hote, 1 to 13. And for the three numbers 11, 12 and 13, we have pictures on the cards and so we call them face cards, the king, queen and the jack. The cards of spades and clubs are black in color and the cards of diamonds and hearts are red. And students, 
it is important that you keep all these points in mind because a number of books that you will study in order to study problems of probability, you will find a number of examples relating to playing cards. All right, having discussed the concept of mutually exclusive events, I would like to revise with you the concept of exhaustive events. As you now see on the screen, events are said to be collectively exhaustive when the union of mutually exclusive events is equal to the entire sample space, S. For example, in the coin tossing experiment, head and tail are collectively exhaustive events. Similarly, in the die tossing experiment, even number and odd number are collectively exhaustive events because if we take the union of the two, we get the entire sample space 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Students, ye jo mutually exclusive events ka concept hai, agar aap gaur kare, to ye us concept ke saath bohat related hai, jo mein aapko lecture number 16 mein de chuki hun, and that is the concept of the partition of a set. As you now see on the screen, a group of mutually exclusive and exhaustive events belonging to a sample space S will be called a partition of the sample space. And with reference to any sample space S, events A and A bar, the complement of A, will form a partition because they are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. This fact is clearly depicted by the Venn diagram because as you can see the events A and A bar are mutually exclusive. They do not have any points in common and when we take the union of these two events we obtain the entire sample space. All right. The next concept that I would like to review with you is the concept of equally likely events. A concept that is very, very basic and important for the classical definition of probability that I will be discussing in a short while. As you now see on the screen, two events A and B are said to be equally likely when one event is as likely to occur as the other. In other words, each event should occur in equal number in an indefinite number of trials. For example, when a fair coin is tossed, the head is as likely to appear as the tail and the proportion of times each side is expected to appear in a very large number of trials is 1 by 2. Similarly, if a card is drawn out of a deck of well shuffled cards, each card is equally likely to be drawn and the proportion of times that we would expect any card to appear in a very, very large number of draws this proportion will be 1 by 52. All right, having revised the concepts of mutually exclusive, exhaustive and equally likely events, let us now begin the discussion of probability itself. As I said earlier, students, probability can be approached in two ways, the subjective approach and the objective approach approach. As you now see on the screen, subjective or personalistic probability, as it is called, is a measure of the strength of a person's belief regarding the occurrence of an event A. Students, 
probability defined in this manner is purely subjective. Subjective se matlab ye ke different persons faced with the same evidence can arrive at different conclusions regarding the probability of a certain event. For example, suppose that a panel of three judges is hearing a trial. Ek hi evidence hai jo teeno judges ke saamne pesh kiya ja hai. But it is possible that two of the judges arrive at the conclusion that the person who is accused is guilty. But one of the judges thinks that the evidence that is presented is not strong enough to arrive at this conclusion. So, students, you can see that subjectivity ka jo element, which I have told you about, is not going to be able evidence do it. There is no situation, ho, and different persons would arrive at different conclusions regarding the probability of a particular event. In fact, अगर हम गौर करें तो इस तरीके से अगर हम probabilistic decisions लें तो हम उन्हें quantify नहीं कर सकते हम इस तरह के decisions अपनी रोज मर्रा जिंदगी में हर वक्त ले रहे होते हैं अगर आप घर से निकलते वक्त छतरी लेकर नहीं निकलते तो इसकी वजह यही होती है कि आपके जहन में ये बात होती है कि सूरज सर पे निकला हुआ है तो इस बात की प्रोबेबिलिटी बहुत कम है कि 5 मिनट के बाद बारिश हो जाए इस तरह के डिसीजन हम लेते तो हर वक्त ही रहते हैं लेकिन वी आर नॉट एबल टू क्वांटिफाई दीस प्रोबेबिलिटीज द वे वी स्टैटिस्टिशियंस वुड लाइक टू डू फॉर आवर स्टैटिस्टिकल वर्क दिस इज व्हाई for statistical purposes, the other definitions are the ones that we are more interested in and these are the ones which fall under the category of the objective approach to probability. The objective approach implies that every person faced with a, a particular situation will arrive at the same result or the same conclusion regarding the probability of a particular event. Under the objective approach, the first definition that I would like to discuss with you is the classical definition of probability. As you now see on the screen, if a random experiment can produce n mutually exclusive and equally likely outcomes and if m out of these outcomes are favorable to the occurrence of a certain event A, then the probability of the event A denoted by P of A is defined as the ratio m over n. Students, this definition was formulated by the French mathematician Laplace and it can be very conveniently applied in those situations where the outcomes are equally likely and where it is easily possible to count the total number of outcomes and the outcomes favorable to a particular event. Um, agar ki definition bohat hi Lambi chori malum ho rahi hai, lekin in reality it is very simple. And I would like to explain this concept to you with the help of an example. Suppose that a card is drawn from an ordinary deck of 52 playing cards, and suppose that we are interested in finding the probability that the card is a red card. Students, ये एक बहुत simple problem है और अब देखने की बात ये है कि हम इसको किस तरीके से approach करें। सबसे पहली बात ये है कि if it is a well shuffled deck of cards, बहुत अच्छी तरह से आपने उसको shuffle कर दिया है, तो intuitively आप understand कर सकते हैं कि जब आप एक card draw करेंगे, 
तो एवरी कार्ड इज इक्वली लाइकली टू बी ड्रॉन हर कार्ड के ड्रॉ किए जाने का चांस बराबर होगा एंड दिस पॉइंट इज द क्रक्स ऑफ द मैटर अगर ये शर्त इक्वली लाइकली वाली इस सिचुएशन में पूरी हो रही है तब तो हम ये क्लासिकल डेफिनेशन अप्लाई कर सकते हैं अगर यही शर्त पूरी नहीं हो रही तो देन देर इज नो वे वी कैन अप्लाई द क्लासिकल डेफिनेशन यहाँ पे अगर हम ये जानते हैं कि इट हैज बीन शफल्ड वेरी वेल देन ऑफ कोर्स वी आर इन अ पोजिशन टू अप्लाई दिस डेफिनेशन और राइट वंस वी आर सेटिस्फाइड कि हम इसे अप्लाई कर सकते हैं उसके बाद दो ही काम बाकी रह जाते हैं वी हैव टू कंप्यूट द रेशो एम ओवर एन एम इज द फेवरेबल द नंबर ऑफ आउटकम्स दैट आर फेवरेबल टू व्हाट आई वांट बट एन ऑफ कोर्स इज द टोटल नंबर ऑफ पॉसिबल आउटकम्स एंड एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल the total number of possible ways in which we can draw one card out of 52 is obviously 52 also because we are interested in a red card and because of the fact that we already know that the cards of diamonds and hearts are red in color and there are 13 of each of them therefore the total number of outcomes favorable to what i want is 13 plus 13 and that is 26 now that it is clear that m is 26 and n is 52 the probability that our card will be red is equal to 26 over 52 and that is half or in other words 50% cards ke isi example mein hum aur bahut si probabilities compute kar sakte hain suppose that we are interested in this um, event that the card that i draw is a 10 yani uska jo number hai wo 10 hai students it is obvious that the total number of tens in this deck of cards is 4 a 10 of diamonds a 10 of hearts a 10 of spades and a 10 of clubs lehaza wo patte jo 10 ki occurrence ko favor karte hain unki tadad 4 hai m is 4 n the total number of ways in which i can draw a card out of this deck is as before 52 and therefore the probability that my card is going to be a 10 is equal to m over n 4 by 52 let us consider another example suppose that we toss a fair coin three times as you now see on the screen the sample space of this experiment consists of eight possible outcomes head 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 tail head tail head tail head 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 tail 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 head tail 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 head and tail 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 suppose that we are interested in finding the probability of the event that when we throw these three coins or this one particular coin three times we get at least one head students ab hum usi tarah approach karenge is problem ko jis tarah humne ab se thodi der pehle isse pichle example mein kiya tha the very first thing to uh, try to understand is ke wo jo shart hai equally likely ki is that valid for this example now the point is that we said that it is a fair coin that we are tossing three times if it is a fair coin अगर वो इस तरह से बना हुआ है कि बिल्कुल सही है टेढ़ा नहीं है एक साइड से घिसा हुआ नहीं है देन इट इज़ ऑब्वियस दैट वी कैन से दैट द टेल इज एज लाइकली टू अकर एज द हेड और खा हम उसको एक दफ़ा टॉस करें या तीन दफ़ा टॉस करें 
उसकी ये प्रॉपर्टी फेयरनेस की जो प्रॉपर्टी है दैट विल बी मेंटेन्ड इस रैशनल के थ्रू वी आर क्वाइट सेटिस्फाइड दैट द आउटकम्स द वेरियस आउटकम्स द टू पॉसिबल आउटकम्स एक्चुअली हेड एंड टेल दे आर इक्वली लाइकली टू अकर वंस वी आर सेटिस्फाइड दैट दिस इज द केस वी कैन वेरी क्विकली अप्लाई द क्लासिकल definition of probability m over n where m is the number of outcomes that are favorable to what i want and n is the total number of possible outcomes in this example as you noticed seven of the eight possible triplets contains an h and only one triplet tail 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 is the one which is without the head hence the probability that my outcome my triplet will contain at least one head is given by m over n that is 7 over 8 abhi jo example humne discuss kiye ye to bahut hi zyada simple example the lekin aapne note kiya hoga ki maine is baat ke upar bahut zyada zor diya ki aap satisfy ho के इक्वली लाइकली की जो डेफिनेशन है वो अप्लाई होती है या नहीं होती इट इज़ वेरी इजी टू लर्न द फार्मूलाज एंड टू अप्लाई दम बट इट इज़ मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट टू रियलाइज दैट अनलेस द असम्शंस ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर फार्मूला आर नॉट वैलिड वी मस्ट नॉट अप्लाई दोज फार्मूलाज लेट इज नाउ कंसिडर a more interesting and a little involved problem as you now see on the screen suppose that four items are taken at random from a box containing 12 items and the four that are drawn they are inspected for checking whether they are faulty or whether they are all right the box is to be rejected for export purposes if more than one item is found to be faulty now if there are three faulty items in that box what is the probability that the box will be accepted aapne note kiya hoga ke ye kafi interesting um problem hai ab isme students सबसे पहली चीज ये है कि हमने ये कहा कि वो जो इंस्पेक्टर है ही इज ड्राइंग दीज आइटम्स फ्रॉम दिस बॉक्स एट रैंडम ये जो दो अल्फाज मैंने इस्तेमाल किए दीज आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रैंडम का मफूम यहाँ पर यही है ना कि इट इज एज इफ इट इज द लॉटरी मेथड कोई उसमें इंटेंशनल सिलेक्शन नहीं है और रैंडमली आप ड्रॉ कर रहे हैं now because of this uh, randomness we can say that each one of those 12 items is equally likely to be drawn and the moment i say this i am in a position to apply the classical definition and that is m over n but students in this particular problem it is not as convenient to compute m or n as it was in the earlier ones that i presented dekhiye yahan par we will be applying the rule of combinations aap note kijiye ke denominator jo hai hamare formula ka n that represents the total number of possible outcomes or in other words the total number of ways in which i can draw four items out of 12 but of course there is no importance of the order in which i draw these items order ki ahmiyat nahi hai lihaza it is not a case of permutations but it is a case of combinations and according to what i explained in the last lecture there are 12 c4 ways of selecting four items out of 
And as you now see on the screen, 12C4 is equal to 12 factorial over 4 factorial into 12 minus 4 factorial. And when you solve this expression, it comes out to be equal to 495. The computation of the numerator m is a little more involved. And actually, it is very interesting. Isme hum rule of combinations, rule of multiplication, or rule of addition, tino bayak vakt istemal karenge. Let me explain it to you step by step. Dekhi, hamare box me 12 items hai out of which 3 are faulty and 9 are alright. Now, I want to find the probability that my box is accepted and it is not uh, stopped from being exported. Or uske liye humne pehle kaha tha ke a box is rejected if 2 or more items out of those four that have been selected, if two or more are um, found to be faulty. Iska matlab ye hua ke agar mere char selected items me se ek faulty hai, to it is no problem. Or agar ek bhi faulty nahi hai, then of course there is no problem at all. Iska matlab ye hua ke jo favorable outcomes hai, jo is baat ko favor karte hai, ke mera jo box hai that will not be stopped from being exported, wo do hi hai, one is that situation, when out of the four selected, not even one is faulty, and the other is that situation, when out of the four selected, only one is faulty. So, we will be computing the number of ways in which the first event can occur and the number of ways in which the second event that is favorable to what I want can occur. And then I will add the two and that will give me the total number of outcomes favorable to what I want. As you now see on the screen, in order to compute the number of ways in which all four of my drawn items will be all right, we note that there are three C0 ways of drawing zero faulty items out of three faulty items and there are nine C4 ways of drawing four okay items out of the nine which are all right. And hence, the total number of ways in which the joint event, no faulty item and four all right items can occur is given by 3C0 into 9C4 in accordance with the multiplication theorem that I discussed in the last lecture. Bilkul isi tara, we can find the number of ways in which we can have one faulty and three all right items. And as you now see on the screen, the total number of ways in which this can be done is 3C1 into 9C3. 3C1 ways of drawing one faulty item out of three and 9C3 ways of drawing three all right items out of nine. Students, agla point ye hai ke jaisa maine pehle kaha, the box is going to be accepted if we have no faulty item or one faulty item. Ye jo loves or maine istemal kiya, jaisa ke aapne set theory mein note kiya tha, or stands for plus, yani or ka matlab hai set theory ki roo se ke aap union ki baat kar rahe hai. और जो डिस्कशन हम इस वक्त कर रहे हैं इस कॉन्टेक्स्ट में और स्टैंड्स फॉर प्लस सो 
as you now see on the screen, the total number of outcomes that are favorable to the fact that the box is accepted is given by 3C0 into 9C4 plus 3C1 into 9C3 and that is equal to 126 plus 252. In other words, 378. Dividing the favorable number of outcomes by the total number of outcomes, the probability that the box is accepted in spite of the fact that it actually contains three faulty items is 0.76 or 76 percent. Students, as you have noticed, the classical definition is quite a simple definition. Lekin dekhne ki cheez or note karne ki baat ye hai ke this definition has a number of shortcomings. Sabse pehli baat aap ye dekhye and this is a very interesting point that this definition involves circular reasoning. Jaise ke maine define kiya tha, humne kaha ke if a random experiment can result in n equally likely and mutually exclusive and exhaustive outcomes and m of them are favorable to the occurrence of an event A and so on. Students, is ke andar ye jo do alfaz mein istemal kiye that those outcomes are equi equally likely, is ka matlab ye hai ke mein ye keh rahi hu that the outcomes are equally probable. Ab dekhye ke probability hi ko to mein define karne ki koshish kar rahi hu aur us definition ke andar hi I am using the word or using the concept of probability. This is called circular reasoning. Or is se mujhe ek latifa yaad a gaya. Ek bachche ne ek sahab se poochha ke school kidar hai? Aur unho ne kaha ke masjid ke saamne. To bachche ne poochha ke masjid kidar hai? To unho ne kaha ke school ke saamne. And this is the kind of problem that we have in this particular definition. Having said this, I would like to convey to you students ke ye jo equally likely ka concept hai ye intuitively understandable hai aur jaisa maine sari discussion jo ab tak ki usme explain kiya agar aapko us phenomenon ki jo physical situation hai usse ye mehsoos hota hai ke equally likely ka concept yahan par apply karta hai then you can apply this definition. Now the other um, problem with this particular definition is that it is very difficult to apply and uh, it is probably not possible to apply it if the total number of outcomes cannot be counted in a convenient manner as we have done in the examples that we just did. Agar aap ka aapki sample space jo hai usme infinite number of sample points ho ya uncountable number of sample points ho then it is not going to be possible for you to apply this definition. The third problem with this definition is that it does not hold if the outcomes are not equally likely. And in my opinion, this is one of the main problems with this definition. Hazar ha real life phenomena aise hain ki jahan pe we cannot say that one event is as likely to occur as another. Ab ye jo example hai ki aap coin toss kar rahe hain ya die toss kar rahe hain, aap khud hi sochiye hum aam life mein is qisam ke experiment kitni martaba karte hain. Practically never, except perhaps when we are playing a game as a child, a game of Ludo or any other such situation. So, generally speaking, we will not be dealing with situations where the various possible outcomes are equally likely. And students, 
these are exactly the situations when we will need to look for another definition of probability. The definition that I am going to present to you next is called the relative frequency definition of probability. Students, is definition ko main in detail next lecture mein aapke saath discuss karungi. Is waqt main bohat mukhtasir karke aapko ye convey karna chahti hoon ke according to this definition, if an experiment is conducted a very large number of times and what we are interested in occurs a certain number of times, then the proportion in which the event of my interest occurs, that proportion is regarded as the probability of that event. Isko ek misal se samajhne ki koshish ki jiye. Aap dekhte hain ke har saal metric ke exam mein bohat se students baithte hain. Bohat se regular students hote hain aur shayad unse zyada hi private students hote hoon. And when the result arrives, of course, we find that a certain proportion of the students obtain the first division, uh, another proportion obtains the second division and a certain proportion also fails in the exam. Students, ye jo proportions hain, inhi ko hum regard karenge as the probability of obtaining a first division, the probability of obtaining a second division and so on. Ye bilkul usi rationale ke mutabik jo maine abhi aapko convey kiya. So, if we find that in, a, in the metric examination of 2002, um, in a particular province of um, a particular country, the proportion of first divisioners is 25%, then we can say that the probability that a student of this particular country, of in this particular kind of a situation, the probability that he will obtain a first division is 25%. In today's lecture, I discussed with you the two main approaches to probability, the subjective approach and the objective approach. Under the objective approach, I discussed in detail the classical definition of probability. And I would like to encourage you students to practice with this concept and to attempt a number of questions involving the classical definition and involving the various counting rules such as the rule of combinations and permutations. In the next lecture, I will discuss in detail the relative frequency definition that I briefly touched upon today and after that we will proceed to the axiomatic definition of probability. Until next time, my best wishes to you and Allah Hafiz.